Charles Juan to further enhance Robin's storyline about this sham of relationship and, and marriage <laughs> with Juan, situationship, whatever we're calling that, I ain't here for it. I think it's a waste of storyline. Let's talk about the nitty gritty. Why are you so financially inept? Anyway, like I said, I'm going too far. Let me dial it back. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, being Simone Iman, and this is Simone. Today we're doing our recap, our weekly recap of Real Housewives of Potomac. This is season five, episode 11. I do not know the name, you guys. Forgive my tardiness with my recap and review. I actually broke out of COVID jail and me and my boo went on a little getaway for his birthday. I went to Denver, Colorado and literally had the time of my life. Like, it was worth the risk, okay? But I'm feeling good, feeling very healthy. <laughs> World Trump like I'm kidding I'm kidding anyway so I got back in town today today is Tuesday and I decided that one of the first things I need to do when I got home is watch Potomac so I can record my video let us commence um how does the episode start the episode starts with Karen calling Ashley and inviting her to Surrey to Wooden Farms to visit with her family but also for her to be a part of her homecoming parade and she had talked about it last episode that she would have much rather have Monique and Candace there however that ain't happening no time soon um Ashley of course asked if the trip is baby friendly one thing about Ashley she gonna bring baby Dean it was so funny I, I'm, I'm going too fast but it was so funny when she showed up at Karen and Ray's Ray was like where's baby Dean Ray low-key be shady <laughs> and I live for it he's the best house uh, husband well he's not a house husband but he's the best husband on Housewives of Potomac franchise um of course Giselle Giselle is nasty and if no other episode has proven this thus far in season five or in the previous four seasons Giselle never has anything nice to say unless it's about herself or about Robin she's very critical and low-key she be hating on Karen she be hating on the grind on why I don't understand but it's obvious like she doesn't have anything nice to say and obviously Karen's being nice to her by inviting her even though it was like a kind of you know default invite because who I really want to come couldn't come but still she invited you be happy about it say nice things like you don't have to have all that hate up in your heart um they go to the b-roll footage uh the b-roll footage and Giselle calls Juan to further enhance Robin's storyline about this sham of relationship and, and marriage <laughs> with Juan situationship Whatever we're calling that, I ain't here for it. I think it's a waste of storyline. Let's talk about the nitty gritty. Why are you so financially inept? Anyway, like I said, I'm going too far. Let me dial it back a little bit. Um, also, forgive my crustiness, okay? Today was a travel day, and I'm just looking in this screen like, girl, I got blemishes and breakouts from makeup and sleeping. Look, it was a good weekend. Anyway, forgive my crustiness. The next part of the episode, we see... Um, Karen and Ray are hosting the ladies goodbye. I honestly think this trip would have been so much better with Monique and Candace. Um, as she said, she slid a tracker in Michael's ass. She needs to stop making jokes about Michael's ass. They don't land well. <laughs> I'm like, when she be saying shit like that, I be like, hmm, facts though. Because his sexuality is in question. Also, guys, look. Y'all gonna hear my baby in the background too, probably, because he is amped up to be home and playing with his trucks. Okay, no more interruptions, back to the review. Um, Giselle shows up looking like she be looking. What was that on her feet and what was that on her head? Jesus. Um, and then she likes to call out the fact that Ray isn't going on the trip. But I don't feel like it's because Ray doesn't want to go. I think Ray has had it with just like this whole Real Housewives of Potomac stuff. like. He'll film, he'll be present for Karen because that's what he's supposed to do as a husband. But as far as like going the extra mile, like traveling with y'all, oh, I'm not traveling with production. And I don't blame him. That man want to retire. That man don't want to be a, a real housewife's husband. He don't want to be a Greg Leaks 2.0. Like he absolutely does not want to have anything to do with it. But um, what I wasn't feeling is the Ray. Ray is super unaffectionate. I thought I was an unaffectionate person. 
Ray Huger is so unaffectionate with Karen. He was like, toodles, bye now, ciao, ciao. See you later. Like that woman wanted to kiss her husband on camera and he wasn't having no parts of it. Ray, at least give us something to work with Ray. At least do it for the camera, Ray. Do it for the gram, Ray. Ray said, hell no. Did y'all say cut in scene yet? Lord, and then we go to um, Candace and Robin with their, what is that called, a chartreuse board? Whatever, I'm not refined. Look, I'm not the grand dame. Whatever that C word is, board, Candace had a little board together. And of course, Robin comes like, honestly, from this point for moving forward, Candace and Monique needs to have their guards up when they're dealing with Giselle and Robin. They are Debbie Downers, Bears of Bad News, Negative Nancy's, and every other alliteration that comes with some hating assholes, okay? Like, I wouldn't tell them nothing. The glee in her eyes when Candace said she was gonna press charges. It's like, girl, you need to be worried about Uncle Sam when his charges that he got against you. Anyway, from the top, uh, Robin delivers the news that Monique isn't remorseful, and of course, Candace cries. Like, it's so easy for Candace to be a victim, but that's because she's been victimized by her mom all her life, so she it's so easy for her to slip into that role of victimhood. Like, look what you did to me. Um, she got her on her shit. She was just as much a part of the escalation. Now, she ain't put her hands on her, but you fed into the, you gonna drag me? And, you know, hey, it happened. But moving forward, the wrong role, is the can uh, the Giselle in the Robin role? That that's that's the wrong role. That's literally what got y'all there. Um, but then this is what I peeped. The whole time Candace is crying and like upset, Robin can offer her no warmth or no comfort or no oh girl it's okay. She she ready for the tea. So what else? What you gonna do about it? Basically. And when Candace says she's gonna press charges against her, that's ding 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 ding. That's exactly what Robin wants to hear. Um, she's also further fueling the division in the group. I can't believe Karen isn't, you know, I'm disappointed in her not holding Monique accountable. Indian Bravo producers, as they often do, they roll that beautiful bean footage and they prove that this hoe is lying. Like, Karen literally sat in her living room and told Monique, you messed up. She is holding her accountable, but she's not gonna throw her friend away for messing up. Take notes. Or no, you do this perfectly with Giselle. Giselle does everything in the book wrong, and you literally have nothing to say about it. Karen just took a note out of the Green Eyed Bandits. Little notebook. Y'all little handbook. She took slipped a little page out that y'all wouldn't miss. Because y'all heavy on the loyalty. That's one thing about the Green Eye Bandits. They heavy on the loyalty with each other. There could be no division. There is no rumor. There is no plot gate that's going to separate Robin and Giselle. It's just not happening. And I got to give it to him for that. But she's feeling the division in the group by talking about how Karen is not holding Monique accountable. And that's not true. And that's wrong. Um... Candace drops the bomb that Karen told her that she would press charges. And honestly, because of the way Karen carries herself, I'm a thousand percent sure she told her that. Like, I'm I'm sure. But the way when they do the clip back to the women in Surrey and Wind Farms, Karen said, if you feel so strongly, then if I felt as strongly as you do, then I would. It's verbiage, but at the end of the day, she told a girl to press charges. So I mean, that is what it is. I'm not surprised, like I said, because that's how Karen carries herself. Is it wrong? Would I have done it? Maybe not. <laughs> Probably wouldn't have told her to call the police, but if she's being honest, if she's saying what she would do, Karen will call the police on the bitch if she touch her. Like, can we can we be mad at her being, you know, living in her truth? Um. Like I said, Robin was eating that shit up and she was all getting inside. She couldn't wait to call Giselle and she just tell Giselle, girl, Karen told, and, Gis and Giselle gonna say, Karen told me the exact same thing. That's one thing about Miss Huger though. She's thorough. There are no lies to be told. Um, 
Let's talk about the things that matter though, Robin. As you're having this sit down with Candace and you're all gleeful because the laws is about to be in Monique's life, Uncle Sam is yet again knocking at your door. Why is Robin so poor financially? And just like, not poor as in like income poor, but poor habits, poor practices. You know, the regular everyday person making less than $100,000 can figure out how to stay out of Texas tax problems and how to not accumulate more debt than you have income like the debt to income ratio is a thing uh, most Americans have to live within it especially if I'm gonna put myself on TV like I'm gonna have my shit together it's not adding up um, she's kind of like laughing about it like <laughs> but she's very you know she don't, she had a lot of words and a lot of mouth for the Candace and Monique debacle but when it comes to her finances she's just like hmm, i kind of messed up i thought i did this i'm not a good accountant no say it with your chest i was trying to get over on uncle sam okay <laughs> i wasn't reporting my income because i didn't want to pay rich people taxes i want to live this town home life but i want to pretend like i'm a real housewife Say it with your chest, Robin. You know, you just trying to pull the wool over Uncle Sam's eyes and he snatched that jacket up off you. Um, the producers then show Robin. I love the production on Robin sometimes. Thank you, Truly Original. They then go to show Robin and all the mouth she had for Karen. I don't believe you weren't aware. We don't believe you weren't aware either, Robin. You did that shit on purpose. You were not, you not Donald Trump, girl. They want all your black dollars, okay? Um, she's had a bankruptcy, foreclosure, and tax liens, and she worried about Monique Savills. Make it make sense. So Karen gets to Wooden Farms, and I love just the whole visual of this. It's just, it's just everything. She says her family owns the land that they once worked as slaves. Do you guys know how? much of an american story that is but also how common that is i know a couple of families like that who own the land that they once worked and tended as slaves or they sharecropped on that land and then they later bought it like that is top tier black people magic type come up type situation like i love it and that's just another reason why karen is the grand dame her family looks so nice and so warm and so inviting um, her and her aunt, her aunt Valerie, they look alike. It was just super cute. Aunt Carlene, I love Aunt Carlene. Aunt Carlene took her to see MJ. So you know Aunt Carlene was the cool aunt. Um, I love them going down memory lane and showing all the old pictures of Karen. It was just like, it, it gave me the warm feels for Karen. Because Karen literally, I'm Team Karen and I'm Team Monique at this point. There's a little person at my door. Um... <laughs> Kara says that her farm, uh, her family farm feeds America, and I'm here for it. Yes, we are a part of the farming industry, and it's not just a little bit. We're not just feeding each other. We're feeding the nation. Um, and then after they get off, like, I don't know. It was like a tractor, but it was like a souped-up tractor, a little person. Pause. Editing magic. I'm back. And uh, they get off the little tractor thing, and then Monique calls. I wonder, like, is that happenstance? Does that just happen? Or do the producers say, okay, they're filming now. Make sure you call so you can be a part of this scene. And the conversation is too choppy to really make sense of what Monique was trying to convey. At that point, Monique still was limited. She was real soft on the accountability for herself. She was doing a lot of victim blaming. And not victim. I take that word back. Because Candace is no one's victim. But she was giving most of the blame to Candace. Which, it, to me, I'm more of an even-handed. Y'all both had a hand in this. Rather than saying, oh, it's her fault or her fault. Like, really, it's y'all fault for letting Giselle and uh, Robin penetrate y'all relationship and pitch y'all against each other like this. But that's neither here nor there. Um... They start talking and it's something about this shit with Giselle and Monique. Like, Giselle gets very upset by even hearing Monique's voice. Like, did she drag you? Why are you so mad? She's a liar and dude. What did she lie about? Okay, she didn't recall the fight the way that it went down or the way that you saw it. 
did she lie about anything else? Like, it's just, it's not making a lot of sense why Giselle gets so upset. She's so vexed in her spirit when it comes to Monique. Um, but, I mean, I can... I can give it to Karen. She admit that she told Candace she would press charges. And knowing how these women like to circle around and, and shoo shoo and she she, that was the perfect thing for her to do. Um, the next scene is Wendy having lunch with her sister Ivy. And Ivy is a surgeon, so y'all not gonna like her either. Cause y'all don't like black women with success. <laughs> um, I'm joking, but y'all was mad at Wendy and her photo degrees. Um, Wendy's glam doesn't work. Wendy's glam, and it's a hard no, but I'm holding out for her next season, she'll get it together. She tells her sister she's afraid to tell her mom that she wants to quit her job, her professorship at Johns Hopkins. And I mean, I've had close relationship, my college roommate was Nigerian, and that's how they be. They be scared of their mamas and daddies, bro. Like grown, grown, still scared. <laughs> but I will say, you know, Wendy doesn't talk much about her dad. So I get the perception that her mom was a single mom and to raise, to be an immigrant, raise children and both of them become doctors is a great feat. So she deserves her things. She deserves her crown. But Wendy, you worked for all of that. So you also deserve your things and you got to decide at some point in your life who deserves their things more, you or your mother. It's an easy one for me. I'm on me all day. Um... It was so cute watching her role play with her sister. Her sister had Nigerian mom down packed. When she kissed her teeth, I said, oh, she know y'all mama well, well. <laughs> and they ate like rich women's. They did they happy hour like I said, like to do my happy hour. I need to sample a couple of appetizers. I'm gonna have a couple drinks, maybe a few. And maybe we can split an entree, but I might need my own. They did it. <laughs> the next scene is the worst scene in Real Housewives of Potomac history. That role play shit with Juan and Robin. Robin pulled the wig back a little bit, a bit, and uh, take the tag off the coat next time. We know you was gonna take it back because you own Uncle Sam, but we don't need to know. <laughs> like we knew, but you just told us, okay, girl. Um, I want to know what Juan had to say about the Texas. Juan likes to record and be all super cool, and he got a lot of Karen Hugo in him. You know, he likes to put on airs like he's this street ball NBA legend. He too cool for school. He probably cried when Robin was back in tax trouble. Um, she said that they have a disconnect between them. Girl, because you can't add and subtract and pay on time. It's an easy fix. He probably had trust issues with her. I wouldn't trust her with my family finances. If it's up to Robin, I'm not putting Robin in any position to lead the family financially, especially when y'all got two little ones. And that make the thing go, whoo, if y'all got financial problems and that's just it. It make you dry up and it make the thing go whoop. Cause if y'all broke and y'all got tax problems, y'all the last thing y'all need to be doing is trying to reconnect or have sex or anything like it. Broke sex is not fun sex, okay? Anyway, <laughs> Karen is in the homecoming parade and she looks great in her pattern blue. That is actually a it color for the fall season. Bye, little person. Um, Giselle is a nasty hater. She doesn't have anything positive to say. She's hating on her powder blue outfit. She's mad because she can't ride in the Bentley. She's mad at Siri. How you mad at a town? Just miserable, Lord. Um, they're talking, Ashley and Giselle, Ashley, Ashley starts to talk about the similarities and where she and Michael are in their relationship and Karen and Ray are in their relationship. And it's a very easy place to find yourself in a relationship. You change so much as a person over the years and you really have to put a lot of effort into maintaining your relationship with your partner as you change. And that's how you know you have true love and something substantial. When you guys can grow together and flourish together, even when you're becoming different people in different phases of your lives, those are the relationships that are steadfast, they're fulfilling, they're supportive. Those are the type of relationships that you want. And it's a struggle to get there sometimes. Um, <laughs> Ashley is talking to Giselle about all her marital woes and honestly Giselle is the last person to ask and this is my thing with Giselle too. Giselle is a former first lady. She's been in a relationship with a pastor. 
Um, there's no first lady in her. There's no scripture. There's even if there's not scripture, because everyone can't quote scripture. There is no encouragement, no spirituality. She never says anything about God or you know allowing the Lord to come into your relationship or getting marital counseling from your pastor or minister. Like things that you would expect from a first lady, just from a personal perspective, even just like character and warmth and camaraderie. Giselle offers none of that. So Ashley's talking to her. You know, she tell Ashley, you got a you got a perky butt. You can get another man. Okay, first lady. And then not to mention, she was saying letting the MFs fly and all of that. What about your image, sis? You said you and Pastor Jamal have an image to maintain. This is not good for the first lady's image. Anyway, Giselle is just a mess. But y'all stand up. Y'all stand for some Giselle. Um, I did love in, in the homecoming parade just watching Karen be embraced by all the people in the town and the kissing the babies and the taking the pictures. And you could tell she was so happy. Just the whole thing. And even when they go into the little church, you could just see just her being full. And she said that. She's full. She's happy. She's having a full circle moment. Um, the next thing is Candace and her mom going to adopt a pet and Candace says they can't agree on a breed of dog. I don't see Candace as a dog person, but whatever. Uh, Mowgli is a cute dog, but it's kind of like Mowgli, modestly ugly, not feeling it. That's a little ugly dog. Um, Dorothy, her mom's position is what you would expect from any black mom. If a woman jumps on me, my mom is going to say, let's call the laws on her. So, she didn't really add anything to it. Candace was like, her mom would have been there sooner if she would have let her. Like, okay, whatever. She probably was, but, <laughs> you know, I, her position is what I would feel if uh, somebody put their hands on my child. We need to file a lawsuit. So, she didn't really add anything to the equation for me. We have been knew they was on that. Um... Karen takes Ashley and Giselle to the church she grew up in, which is a beautiful little sanctuary. Just the cutest little country church. Um, I just feel like Karen's position as a black woman in reality television right now, what she's giving this season is beyond what any of them have given in the franchise as far as being honest, transparent, her storyline being genuine. Like... You know, what, what Karen has going on is relatable. It's real. She's not putting on. Even though they say the grand dame is an act, but we've seen her at her lowest. When her parents died, we saw her at her lowest. When her husband is having, you know, tax problems. When there's the problems in her relationship with her husband, she's sharing that. Her storyline is authentic. She doesn't have to try. She doesn't have to work. She's being herself. She's enjoyable. She gets drunk on camera. Like, Karen... Girl, come on, Nene Leaks done left us, girl. We need you. <laughs> we, we need you. And then we see what's the next scene? Monique speaks with her pastor. This is the end of the scene. What's pastor name? And what's his congregation? What's his church name? Because he he was on it. I love how direct he was with her. He allowed her to pussyfoot and sugarcoat and blame Candace. And he said, no, but it's about you, Monique. And everything he said was dead on. Um, Monique had her Birkin sitting up there pretty on the counter in the kitchen. But anyway, um, Monique absolutely cares about her image and what people think about her. And I've been saying that since she been saying she don't. Um, his analysis was like he watches the show he told her you know you're trying to impress these women who are not impressed by you and that's a trigger for her it's frustrating for her um they pick at her perfections and they make them imperfect case in point her saying she had four homes oh now you bragging right um let me take y'all to my lake house it's in the middle of nowhere it's in the sticks let me jump in your bed it's not good enough um, she has her loyal, rich, devoted husband, big boy, big boy, you spending his money, that's his money. All the things that have curated this image of perfection for her, they pick it apart. And she's never good enough for them. And that taps into some insecurities that she's had. Evidently, he was saying she was bullied growing up. 
And so she has to prove herself. And when they're not accepting and they're not open, look, when Candace was twirling and doing all that at that winery, they were laughing at her. And it was in turn like laughing at her, mocking Monique. And that shit triggered Monique a lot. I can tell, like, y'all, oh, you got these bitches laughing at me? Really? Walk? Like, like, I get it. It's very human. Um, I see a lot of me in that, though. Just constantly trying to prove yourself to people. And you know you worthy. Like, you know you the shit. You know you the bomb. But it's just still something in you that makes you want to have to, or you feel like you have to prove yourself to other people. It's a lot. It's a burden. And she got to let that go. Um, she finally admits that Candace didn't deserve what happened to her and that she needs to apologize. And I felt Chris in that moment, too. Chris was like, like, Chris is my partner. And I haven't talked to him or reached out to him. And I feel horrible about that. And we need to. We need to make this right. Um, say what you want about Chris Samuels. He's a caveman. He's a little horny toad. But when they come by sticking by Monique's side, he he's down the ride. I think we saw that in that live they did where he said he wished he could turn into Bruce Jenner and slap the fire out of them women. Anyway, you guys, I had to run home through all this U part and get this video cranked out for y'all. Y'all, y'all even want to see what it look like under here. I probably just showed you. Anyway, you guys, thank you for watching my video. Please, please stick around and subscribe. I do these every week. And I'm really trying to get in my lane and see what I really want to put forth on this channel. And I think I got some good things coming for you. So be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see y'all next week. Bye.